to order the, this uh, October 4th meeting of the Capitola Planning Commission. Uh, before we actually begin, I want to announce that the meeting is being uh, cablecast live on Charter Communications, um, Cable TV Channel 8 and AT&T U-verse Channel 99. It's being recorded and will be replayed uh, next Monday and Friday at 1 p.m. on Charter Channel 71 and Comcast Channel 25. Uh, meetings can also be viewed on the city's website at www.cityofcapitola.org. Our technician tonight is Lynn Dutton. And with that, let's um, have a roll call, please, Jackie. Thank you. Commissioner Ed Newman? Here. Commissioner Linda Smith? Here. Commissioner T.J. Welch? Here. Commissioner Susan Wesson? Here. Chairperson Sam Story? Here. Uh, next, will you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next on the agenda is oral communications. We'll begin with any additions and deletions to the agenda. Does staff wish to? No changes. Any, uh, commissioners, any changes? Hearing none, next we'll move to public comment. This is opportunity for <coughs> members of the public to address the commission on items that are not on tonight's agenda. agenda excuse me. Um, does anyone want to speak in public comment? Seeing none, um, next we'll come to commission comments. Commissioners? I don't have anything other than uh, I did notice uh, our last meeting and then uh, last night uh, AT&T U-verse was not showing the, our meetings or the candidates forum last night. So I'm not sure who looks into that if we need to call I somebody. I can speak with our IT. Okay. See. Yeah. Well, thanks, TJ, for mentioning that. Any other commission comments? Uh, uh, I just wanted to thank Jackie for having worked with us. She's going to be leaving us and moving to a new position within the city of Capitola. And I've appreciated what a great job she's done with the minutes. And um, it's not an easy thing to do. So we'll miss you. Yeah. Well, yes. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, but congratulations mm -hmm. on your new position. Will this be your last meeting then? Or? Uh, possibly. Oh, OK. <laughs> 100% possibly, yes. Uh, any other commission comments? Uh, next one, we'll move to staff comments. Okay, thank you. I have a few comments. Um, I also uh, wanted to extend my thanks to Jackie and uh, with her dedication to the Planning Commission and these meetings and what a great job she's done. So Jackie, and now moving into the Development Service Tech position. So she'll still be at City Hall and uh, we look forward to having her in that capacity. I also wanted to announce that today we launched a bike share survey and it's on the city website so um, you can go to the city website and uh, take that survey and I also sent out an email that I'd love for all of you to forward on to your closest friends mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, neighbors um, a quick update on 4960 Capitola Road that project we've been asking for updates there is going to be a final inspection um, next week and then following that there'll be a report put together for the courts to review um, and then the other news is that at 210 Central this is an application that was continued to our next Planning Commission meeting they have um, let me know that the story polls will be installed on October 26th once I have confirmation that those are installed I will send out an email and let you know as a reminder but that's the Friday before the meeting so hopefully they are installed for that weekend that you can go up and take a look and what was that address again 210 Central thank you and that's all I have thank you thank you Katie uh, the next is on our agenda is approval of the minutes um, do commissioners um, wish to make any changes to the minutes of September 6 2018 or make a motion to approve I would move approval as drafted. Is there a second? I'll second. The motion and a second. Uh, hearing no further uh, discussion, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Next, we'll move to the consent calendar. This is an, uh, there's only one item on the consent calendar tonight. 
it will be uh, handled uh, without extensive discussion um, on, a, on a vote unless somebody wishes to pull it. Do any members of the public wish to pull the consent item? Seeing none, commissioners, everybody's good. Um, so is there a motion to approve the consent calendar? I'll make a motion to approve the consent calendar. Is there a second? I'll second. A motion and a second, and I just want to announce I will recuse myself since this uh, um, project, this address is within my uh, conflict proximity. Uh, so with that, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, so the motion passes as 4-0 with one recusal. <coughs> then we'll move to the public hearings for this evening. The first item is uh, 211 Monterey Avenue. Uh, this is an application for a fence height exception beyond the 42 inch maximum front yard fence height uh, permitted. Uh, we'll begin with a staff report. Good evening, commissioners, chairperson Story. The applicant is requesting approval of fence exceptions to permit a four foot high section of fence a five foot six inch gate and an eight foot trellis above the gate on the southernmost edge of the front of the property. The existing residence is a duplex located in Capitola Village. The property is surrounded by mixed use residential and commercial lots and fronts a busy sidewalk. On March 22, 2018, the City Council recommended staff approve a fence permit allowing a 42 inch high fence to be built within 33 inches of the front of the home. The applicant has subsequently constructed a fence meeting those requirements along the front 25 feet of the property. The applicant is proposing to extend the current fence and add a gate and trellis. Due to a change in street elevation, the applicant is requesting a height exception to build the remaining portion of fence four feet high so it will align with the existing fence. The applicant is also seeking height exceptions for the entry features, which include a five foot six inch gate with an eight foot trellis. Capitola Municipal Code limits fences between the property line and the front line of the principal building to a maximum height of 42 inches. The applicant is requesting the fence exception so that the entire length of fence aligns, creating continuity. The owner did not want to decrease the height of the fence on the north side of the property due to past privacy issues related to being located on a major pedestrian thoroughfare. There are no standards for a fence height exception within the code. The proposed fence, however, is consistent with the central village design guideline that the front yard should be landscaped and create a sense of entry to the unit and or units. Also of note is that when the City Council reviewed the fence in March, height was discussed and they encouraged the applicant to apply for a fence height exception through Planning Commission's review. Staff recommends the Planning Commission approve Project 18-0411 based on the conditions and findings for approval. Thank you. Are there questions on the staff report? If not, I'll open it up to uh, the public. <coughs> Anyone here to speak uh, to the commission on this project? Seeing none, I'll bring it back uh, for discussion among the commissioners and uh, possible action. I'm, I'm fine with this. I'm looking at my fellow commissioner down it? there. It's so? not a variance, it's no. an exception. Oh, it's not a variance. Is there some reason why the applicant didn't want to? Show up her. Oh, the applicant is here. Oh, you just don't have anything to say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm actually fine for it and move yeah, approval. I, I don't have a problem with it either. I I would second approval. <laughs> okay. That I heard this. Was there a motion? I, I made a motion. Oh, to you did. I'm sorry. I missed that, TJ. So there's a motion and a second. <coughs> Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Which brings us to the next item, which is 5B. Um, and this is um, for a Park Avenue sidewalk improvements. Um, this is a coastal development permit for sidewalk improvements on Park Avenue uh, in the R1 single family residential zoning district. Um, the improvements include a new sidewalk, 
on the north side of Park Avenue, extending from McCormick Avenue to Wesley Street and a crosswalk at Cabrillo Street to connect the new sidewalk on the north side to the existing sidewalk on the south side of Park Avenue. Um, so can we have a staff report, please? Yes, sir. Thank you, Chairman Story. So tonight, the uh, City of Capitola is applying for a coastal development permit for sidewalk improvements along Park Avenue. Uh, the improvements include a new sidewalk on the north side of Park Avenue, extending from McCormick Avenue to Wesley Street, and then a new crosswalk at Cabrillo Street to connect the new sidewalk on the north side to the existing sidewalk on the south side of Park Avenue. Uh, I'm going to zoom in here on a, these six sections because it's it's so pulled back for the other view that it's kind of hard to see. So just give me a second here and I'll go through them. Section one is the McCormick Avenue Park Avenue intersection. Here that is in Street View. Then we have between McCormick Avenue and Washburn Avenue in the Street View. Washburn Avenue Park Avenue intersection. And the, I think the, the interesting thing for me on this is just looking at the elevation difference and kind of what's going to be involved with the sidewalk improvements along each one of these little sections. The uh, apartment driveway Park Avenue intersection. The Wesley Street Park Avenue intersection. And then the Cabrillo Street Park Avenue intersection and this is the end where the, the crosswalk would be right here in the foreground crossing over right there uh, this is an existing cross section of Park Avenue showing the car lanes and bike lanes along Park Avenue the adjacent area on the north side of Park Avenue with driveways planting areas and utilities and the area on the south side of Park Avenue with planting and parking areas And then this is the proposed cross section of Park Avenue uh, with car lanes and bike lanes in the middle, uh, curb gutter, sidewalk, and driveways on the north side, uh, and the existing planting and parking areas on the south side on the right. Uh, just so you guys know what the blue and hatched areas are, uh, part of the Park Avenue sidewalk project work will occur on private property because several of the existing driveways will need minor grading uh, to meet the new grade of the sidewalk. These areas are indicated on the plans as the hatched and blue areas that you see here. And city staff is coordinating with uh, this work with the affected property owners. Just side note, we didn't receive any public comment on this um, from any of those affected property owners. And then I just want to give you a little backstory on this just because I personally am very interested in CIP projects. Um, the Park Avenue Sidewalk Improvement Project has been in the Capital Improvement Program since 2000. A small portion of it from Monterey Avenue to McCormick Avenue was built in 2002. Uh, the current project limits were firmly established in 2012 and the project was partially funded at that time. Then additional funding was identified in 2017 and the project design was moved forward into the final design phase. And then the last piece of funding was approved by the Santa Cruz Regional Transportation Commission in the form of a Transportation Development Act allocation in September 2018. And here we are. Uh, the proposed sidewalk and crosswalk will create a safer means for the public to access the coast and recreational opportunities in Capitola Village and New Brighton State Beach, consistent with the purpose of the local coastal plan. The proposed project complies with the required findings of a coastal development permit. So staff recommends that the Planning Commission approve application 180494 based on the conditions and findings for approval. Uh, and I also wanted to point out that uh, Public Works Project Manager uh, Kailash Mazumder is here and he's available to answer any questions related to this project. Any questions? <laughs> as long as it's related to the project. <laughs> oh, I guess you answered the question. I was tr having trouble finding what coastal policies were involved in this application but I guess they're positive ones it, mm -hmm. it only improves the coastal policies it doesn't there's no conflict and no right if you read through the findings I, I kind of elaborated a lot in there about about how it meets the the required findings and sort of exceeds that because it really works extra towards all those goals so 
Any other questions on the? Just one comment. If you go back to the um, the graphic, the dark hatch lines that you've got in each of the intersections, those just denote a regular um, pedestrian crossing, right? There's correct. Will they be painted? Will they be what? Will they be painted with stripes on them? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. The the graphic is just is supposed to depict the type of striping that we'll be using. And we we did have a public workshop on May seventeenth and had pretty good attendance. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, commissioners. Thanks for having me. Um, so I'm here to help explain any questions you guys have about the Park Avenue project. I wanted to just add to the commentary that Matt pro provided that we did have a, a public workshop on May 17th that was pretty well attended. We had a lot of feedback from the residents. And our, our, our method of kind of going forward with this project was to show them what the plans were. And uh, I guess, as you would assume, all the most of the residents that have some type of blue hatching on their property were interested to understand what that might be. So we've been working with them to understand what what they need for width of entry to try to provide a safe path of travel as they can. Because for those residents that live on Park Avenue, they have to pull in in and out pretty fast along that street. So we've worked with them to try to make sure their approaches are as wide as possible so that they don't have to come to such a slow you know stop on Park Avenue to get into their homes and then um, the what else have we we we've, we're at 90 percent design right now and so m the plan is to send back out the the drawings to each one of the residents to provide to get final feedback before we get to final design and then go out uh, to bid hopefully this this winter and with everything goes great we'll be able to go into construction next spring or summer one other question ahead, um, is there any plan to do an active lighted crossing um, where we actually cross over Park Avenue with yes a yes so that was part of the requirement or one of the recommendations from uh, the RTC was that we make sure that that's an audible crossing because you don't want you know as it is now it, it's going to be audible and lighted so that okay. both both you know if people have either seeing or Good. visual impairments that mm -hmm. they understand where where it is um, and making it lighted then allows them to be more well um, seen and we, we selected that location as opposed to going off of Wesley because of the proximity to that community and the way all the little roads feed into that. I think you'll get, we'll get more use at that crossing. Mm -hmm. And so we, we had originally thought to have it at Wesley, but after further review, moved it to Cabrillo. And also the site distance was a little bit better there because you're coming up the hill and we wanted it to be as safe as possible. And the, when I say lighted, I'm, I'm referring to the one at, I believe it's 42nd and Capitola Road where you've got mm -hmm. the sign lights up and, and the, I'm more worried about cars seeing it than yes. the pedestrians. Yeah, no, that's, that's the goal is to, okay. have, yeah, is to have that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, can, uh, before you go, I wondered, uh, um, you know, on the cross section there, I couldn't quite tell, but the, the bike lane will maintain its current uh, width now right. and won't be diminished in no the only so what we you know in order to to accommodate this there is actually a fair amount of room um, we're reducing the two lanes of travel by half a foot in both directions so minimal effect on traffic hopefully maybe some slowing but probably you know, not, nothing to be that to, would be a good thing. to hang our hat yeah. on, but yeah. Um, and then the bike lane width should should remain, and then adding the okay. the sidewalk frontage because a lot of the properties have developed or landscaped all the way into you know beyond maybe their property line. But I, I, from talking to almost all of the residents, everyone seems to see, sees this as an improvement to the to their uh, you know frontage, and I, I think it'll get hopefully get really good use. Well, thank you. Any other questions on the staff report? Um, if not, I think I'll open it up uh, to any members of the public that would like to address the commission on this item. But the sidewalk on Park <coughs> Avenue? <laughs> <laughs> come on, Kay, you can come up to the podium. Please, yeah, please come up to the microphone so that yeah, <coughs> everyone can hear you. And okay. um, my name is Neil Johnson. I live at uh, 308 Park Avenue, um, and I have talked 
with you before about our approach and my neighbor's approach, uh, Jeff and Colleen Stovey's uh, home. And it was gonna be a little bit more difficult because of, of the slope. And I just wonder what uh, you came up with or have, has anything. Uh, yeah, so the process is, so I, I just received. So you time. need to come back. Up. <laughs> yes. Okay. It's recorded, okay. so we got to get you. So to answer your question, uh, the process we're at now, we're at 90% design. So I just received that this last week. So my plan is to then send out the drawings to each resident of their, fr their frontage to get any feedback final feedback on that, uh, make any site visits if we need to review what the plans are, and then go out to uh, have 100% design before we go out to bid. So um, you'll, I should be mailing that out this next week, and then after that, um, I'm you know free to come by and take a look, closer look at how it affects your, your front of your property. Good, that's all I need. Okay. And then one other issue, so um, Right now, as we are, we're all approaching our driveways are gravel, and we understand that they were gravel um, because of Coastal Commission for percolation. I don't know if that still stands, but the other um, concern we have is that if the sidewalk is going to go in, we feel like we probably should develop our driveway. You know, I don't want a sidewalk to be there and then come down onto the gravel. So we were hoping that if the contractor was there and they were doing the cement work that maybe there was um, we could do business with them and work with them okay maybe you could respond to that question okay. thanks for your question so I did look into that after our, our public meeting and I did not find any information um, that, that confirmed that you need to maintain a gravel driveway um, it is our plan to let all the residents know that they can work with the contractor once they've been awarded the contract to extend the work if they want to do more work on their frontage. So either paving their their site their uh, driveway or if they want to use asphalt, mm -hmm. you know that'll be up to them to work out that that independently with the contractor. Though that won't right. be done through the city. Right. But unless there's you know I, unless there's any other information on this, I, I believe that there's no need to maintain a gravel driveway. Right. Would, and would the residents be able to just get an over-counter permit if they wanted to um, improve their uh, driveways? Right. We would we would issue inc the encroachment permit to do the work, but uh, at no fee. Right. To, yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. That's the plan. Um, I did have one other question. You you're going to send out the final plans to the residents. Um, what if they had some objections or wanted to uh, didn't agree? Um, what would be the considered process at that point? So, so what we've done so far is because we did we did do that at the first meeting in, in mm -hmm. May, and there were some modifications that we we had. Uh, a number of the residents asked that we meet with them at their property to review the plans, and we did that. And in the, for the most part, we were able to identify what their concerns were. For the most part, it was again having as wide an approach as possible, just so that the angle of entry and exit wasn't too steep, and. And so we'll, I'll plan to do the same with this. Once we have the 90% drawing sent out, any feedback that we get, we'll work with the engineering team to incorporate that. So uh, uh, as of yet, we haven't had anything that it's contrary to what our, our design plans are, but mostly just slight modifications to the, the width of approaches or, or understanding where the, you know, if they have a retaining wall, how that'll be affected. Okay, you're pretty confident then that uh, you'll be able to work out every all the little details with the residents. yeah I hope I, I haven't yeah so far everything's worked out pretty well and I, I think I've almost spoken with probably 80% of the residents and then a lot of them have talked to their neighbors and then relayed their information to to us so I feel like we have we've been given as much feedback as, as needed and and really there's only about a dozen residents that have actual encroachment into their property to to conform to the sidewalk and and all of them have had their voices uh, expressed to us and, and we've been able to incorporate their comments. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or? Okay, with that, um, I'll close the microphone up front. I'll bring it back for commission discussion and uh, action. I, I just wanted to mention that I live within that 500 feet, but uh, in past actions over this, this doesn't really, uh, it's not a, I guess, uh, Concern, so I don't know if we have to. Rec I think Sam, you'd probably be in the same boat, right? You're within this same 500 foot. But on these type of projects that are, um, 
these city type projects. I don't know that that's a mm -hmm. concern. Well, if, mm. if you're more comfortable, mm -hmm. you could just recuse yourself. Yeah, that might be. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, I, I think don't. it will <coughs> pass. Yeah, I don't think that's a problem. Yeah. Katie, were you, were you able to determine whether or not uh, TJ and I live within that 500 foot zone? or? From Park Avenue, um, yeah. I'm. I know I do. I mean, I yeah, got my map. So TJ's clearly right. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I think we have. I don't think we have Sam. Yeah, I know in the past I spoke to the attorney on these city type projects. It's yes, not really a conflict of interest, but we we have a, a enough people here tonight. I think if I recuse myself, it's not going to be a problem. And chairperson story should also recuse himself. Yeah, Thank it you. looks like yeah, if you move Sorry. that circle up. Um, so any other um, uh, discussions? So with that, uh, I'll entertain a, a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the coastal permit for this project. Is there a second? I'll second it. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So the motion passes unanimously with two recusals. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, this project has been a long time coming, and so I'm, I'm very <laughs> pleased to yeah. 18 years. see it. <laughs> 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 Someone should let Sandy Erickson know. She used to come to all the council meetings and complain that we were not getting this project done. Um, yep. Next, we'll go to the director's report. Um, I did want to provide you with an update on your question regarding animate uh, signs, people holding signs. Um, I've been working with the attorney's office, and we're not quite there with the with the answer for you. We're looking at. Um, animated signs, possibly uh, looking at the definition of animated signs, they're moving signs and whether or not we can hold, um, we can regulate the people holding signs under the animated sign standards. So we continue to look at it. We've been uh, emailing back and forth, but I, I don't feel 100% confident in the answer yet. So I'll be at the next planning commission updating you again on whether or not we can utilize that standard and whether or not we did utilize that standard because if, if we can utilize it we'll be planning on sending out letters so thank you thank you uh, commission communications I, well I assume there's nothing new on Sears or orchard supply no um, for no updates on orchard supply and Sears project has not changed at this point um, they in recent conversations with them we um, they let me know that they're still working on their stormwater and also on the environmental cleanup. So it, we're two weeks away, well, three weeks away from the appeal. So we'll see if we have any very last minute submittals. But other than that, no modification. Thank you. Anything else? Nothing. With that, I'll adjourn this meeting. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. When's the next meeting, Katie? November 1st. November 1st. November the 1st. Maybe we ought to have a fart.